So phase two of my getting in shape for New Year on the saxophone uh, for this New Year's Eve gig was to just get my fingers to actually do what my brain was asking them to do. So I think those two things I've noticed the most after leaving the practice for some time. The tone starts to go and your embouchure gets tired quicker um, and you lose your, your chops. Um, and also you just your fingers don't feel very connected to the instrument. So this was the second thing I wanted to do, to go through and just get my fingers to work properly. Now some people, they just get on the instrument and they start moving around the instrument really quickly. <laughs> But to be honest, I think that's that's rubbish. You know, it's not really doing anything. It's just, I mean, anyone can wiggle their fingers. It's it's not about that. It's not about physically moving them. It's about being able to engage the mind and just making the fingers move at exactly the right time. Now I'm doing loads of work on this anyway, but I've really noticed after this Christmas break that this really slipped. So what I've done is gone through something that I've done loads and loads of times before. It's just a book of exercises. In fact, it's just the first exercise from this book of however many, 90, oh, 158 saxophone exercises. So I've gone through the first one and just tried to really connect with it, with a metronome. It's really important that you use the metronome because otherwise it's a waste of time. with the metronome set at 60 beats per minute and I'm playing them as quavers. This is just sort of getting me into it. Now what I'm going to do is play the same thing but as crotchets, so on every click. be thinking when I started at 60 playing quavers that I'd end up going either increasing the tempo uh, to 70 or 80 or to start doing semi quavers um, but in fact I've gone the other way around I've tried to slow it down because it's not about as I said at the beginning it's not about wiggling your fingers quickly it's about moving precisely from one note to another and even just doing that just then I noticed that there were so many places where I was playing off the beat and the more you listen, the, the, the gap will seem bigger. So when I'm really bang on it, I can't really hear the metronome. But when I just come in slightly early, which is the, the most common thing to do is to come in too early, I can, I can sense that I've just rushed it slightly. Sometimes there are a few things late. Sometimes I can notice that the position of my fingers between one one key and another key doesn't quite work as quickly as I want it to. Or there's just this little bit of stickiness that's just technique that I'm trying to iron out all of those things. So this is the book that I've had for a long time. It doesn't really matter what book you use. It doesn't matter what exercise you use. I would just say try and use something that's got a reasonable range 
and um, that incorporates as many different notes as possible. So this first uh, exercise here, you end up playing the whole range of the instrument and you play every single note in the end. So on the build up to this gig that I had, I did those two things. I did my tone work and I did my sort of grounding technique, I suppose, of just making my fingers work in time with my head. And those two things just prepared me enough. You know, I probably, well, I definitely should have done more, um, but that's what happens over Christmas, I guess. Um, but those two things really did help to kind of get me back into the zone. So. I'd recommend just doing those, let's say five to 10 minutes on the long tones and then another five to 10 minutes on the grounding work. I hope you found this useful. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. And uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down, that's fine. Leave any comments as well at the bottom.